Well, gentlemen, we're here today to talk about the Scrub, the Scrub job that's going on with the switcher supplies in today's market. For about eight years, nine years, we have been spoiled with this little device here. It's a 30 amp LED switch module. We're gonna come back to this. I wish we could still get these, but we can. We cannot, we cannot get them anymore. What we are stuck with today is we're in the land of lies. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's go down here and let's take a look for it. this. This is the Model S 500-12. They're claiming this is a 40 amp supply. Um, no. Why do I say, ah, no? Well, it's the same footprint. And I understand that it's got the label on it. And it's got the, you know, European certification, the China excrement. That's really what that means. Um, the European certification. This is like Europe's, um, this is a slightly cheaper version of the UL labs that was started here in the United States. Like if it's got UL listed on there, that means this, whatever that thing is, will do exactly what it says it's going to do. When you see the CE, eh, I, I jokingly call that the China excrement symbol because it's so much cheaper than the UL lab certification, that, that little underwrite score. And I honestly don't think that, you know, they'll send them 10 test pieces that might be two spec and they'll get their little CE certification, then they'll, they'll go put a million stickers on it. Of course, remember, this is made in China where they will put anything on label anytime and they don't care that it, they don't have a certification or not because usually the, the company that puts, the, it's, it's a joke. There's no enforcement of anything anymore. I, I got in a debate the other day with this, with this gentleman on the internet. Um, he was talking about, but the data sheet says, the data, we were talking about coax. He's like, but the data sheet says, the data sheet says, the data sheet says. And I'm like, dude, I don't care what the data sheet says. I know from practical application with that piece of coax, it's gonna fricking melt. It's just, it's not gonna hold it. It's not gonna hold the amount of power you wanna put through it. He's like, well, then I guess all data sheets are wrong. And what's the point of even reading data sheets? Well, it depends on where the data sheet's written. <laughs> Um, the HG287916 DO8. You and I both know those are two separate parts from the Toshiba 2879. But when you get a data sheet for the HG, it's exactly the same as the Toshiba, even though we know those parts are different. And the same thing with the 2879C. It's literally they just went and Photoshop in their phone and squiggled out the Toshi Toshiba and put it, yeah, okay. You guys get where I'm going with this. This is a legit old school old trusted reliable old faithful get the job done you take one of these puppies it was really actually good for this one was legit at 12 volts about 40 amps you could put one of these in at 12 volts and know that it was going to do roughly 30 amps 35 amps worth of work even though it's rated at the s36012 okay and they've got it rated at 30 amps this thing, you could overclock the bejesus out of it. You cut a resistor down here, add a diode, and then you could chain a bunch of these together, and it would totally null out what this little potentiometer did, and you could sit there and run the voltage way up and down. Like, you could make this thing do crazy volts, like 18 volts. Now, that's another thing I want to cover. It gets really annoying to me when somebody says, um, so, when uh, I crank my voltage up to 15 volts, and I got three of the modules put together. Why is it only being able to hold 70 amps? Well, the unit is supposedly rated, once again, CE certification. Okay, right there. The unit is supposedly tested at 12 volts to produce 30 amps. When you go away from that 12 volt setting and you start to increase your voltage up, what ends up happening is you start losing amperage in the power supply. It's a sacrifice. To gain more volts, you're gonna lose amps, especially in this particular circuit and setup. 
I don't know how the Chinese engineers were able to go. I remember the first time I looked at one of these and went, wow, that is the cheapest thing that they could possibly get until today. I look over here and I look at this and I go, damn, they made it cheaper. And I applaud them. They made it cheaper. Unfortunately, after looking at the quality of the components, the size of the components, and the way the things are laid out in here, I could not personally give my hat. I give this thing maybe a 25 amp rating, 20 amp rating. It ain't no 40 amp rating. I'll tell you that right now. We'll get into why that is in just a minute. We'll be making some one-to-one -one comparisons here between the two, and you're going to immediately see what I'm talking about. For right now, what I want to talk about is how you can go about overclocking these. Um, you've got resistor R number 39, which is directly here. Um, it's a 1.5K resistor. I've got it paralleled with another 1.5K resistor. And by parallel in this resistor, so basically cutting the, the resistance of this resistor in half, in half, um, we now can vary the voltage on this thing, the output voltage, um, out of the box, directly out of the box, by the way. Let's cover that real quick. This is it, out of the box, completely unmolested, unmodified. We can adjust this from like 9.5 volts to 14.44. Now remember both of this both of these units this this unit and this unit they're the same thing are built with 10% quality components so if we need it to be a 1 ohm resistor it's plus or minus 10% both ways so you're going to see wild fluctuations in your maximum voltage and your minimum voltages between the two but you can figure it's going to be somewhere between 9 and 14 volts okay if we modify this one resistor, now we can overclock the supply. Nah, okay. That being said, the output filtering caps here are 16 volts. 100% of the output schmoo has to go through this choke to isolate itself from noise and then goes across this filtering cap, these three filtering caps. And they are 16 volt, 330 UF. Which means I would strongly suggest that you don't overclock the thing past 16 volts or you're going to have electrolytic schmoo all in your face. Period. They figured out how to make a cheaper resistor. We start noticing. We're going to do a one to one comparison between this 40 amp module and the 30 35 amp module that's right next to it here in just a minute the nice portion of this is to save you from having to pull your old power supply apart this is what the underside of this board looks like right here we are referencing the ground output through our variable potentiometer here and we're firing it down this trace which comes to this resistor, and that is our reference resistor. That's how we control our base reference control is from here. This little guy right here on this particular board design. So to overclock, this is pretty simple. Now, that being said, to chain a bunch of these together, it gets really, really simple because we're referencing ground. You can go in and add your 1.5 meg resistor. And it, once again, we can also change that you could pop this resistor out and just go to a one meg resistor in here and that would get you a variable window of about from with this particular setup you have your bottom voltage with the variable turned all the way down and you better have the variable turned all the way down before you power up the supply by the way um, it's going to be roughly around 13 volts and the top voltage is 19. Well, like i said at 19 volts these caps are going to explode they'll, they'll explode anything over 16. Well, it might hold it for a few minutes or days but eventually these are going to let their little magic smoke out so you can overclock this by simply changing this resistor to a 1k resistor okay or like what i did piggyback and when you go to 1k versus 700 and something 750 ohms that's here present now um, your base window is going to be closer to about the bottom voltage is 12 the top voltage is going to be closer to about 16 17 volts so that's how we overclock this particular style of power supply this is 
pretty much what we've got to deal with in the market right now. So we can build with these, we just have to be able to embrace the fact that they're not going to produce as much amperage. So that means we're going to have to add more modules in the power supply. It's a fact, it's just what it is. For a long time, for almost a full decade, we have been spoiled by this, okay? And so we could all look down on the inside of a four pill and went, oh, well, four pill needs 100 amps, so that means it needs roughly three modules, right? Nope, now we need four. Bottom line. Four transistor amplifier needs four modules, one module per pill at this point. I would not trust this over 25 amps, especially if you decide that you're going to run the voltage up to 15 volts. I would not count on this to produce anything more than 25 amps. And as with 110 volts feeding it, of course your efficiency is going to increase. It's going to get closer to about 60-65% when you go to 220, because the voltage input voltage is higher. But still the efficiency of the device stays roughly the same. So <clears throat> when we start peeling the skin off this thing and getting down to look at the warts on it, Let's start here at the front. This tray, I don't think they'll, I'm sure somebody out there in China right now is working on how to make this cheaper. But if you look at it, it sits lower. These two trays, this, this is a little bit thinner. But the trays are roughly the same. The potentiometer is roughly the same. Here's our big problem is our filtering caps. These are 25 volt 3300, these are 16 volt 3300s. But as we go further into the power supply itself, we can see that our filters, this one's half the size and literally half the windings. Well, a third the windings actually, this third the windings of this. Okay, that means less electrical smooth can flow through here. There is no thermal inner, inner break. This, this here is a thermal switch that when this thing gets too hot, it shuts the power supply off. A lot of builders have to bypass those. And I mean, it just continues on. Um, these transistors are a little bit higher end. These are a 5% tolerance component. This is a 10%. Uh, these transistors here, which are drive MOSFETs, also 10%, 5%. The power supply filtering capacitors that are in the back of the thing, somehow they've managed to figure out how to get rid of the noise ripple with these smaller caps. These here are 250 volts, 680 UF. These here are 250 volt, 470 UF. So smaller caps all the way around. Our primary rectifier bridge here. Those two parts look roughly about the same. This capacitor is an eighth the size of this little guy. It goes on and on and on. They just sharpened their pencil and they figured out how to make it cheaper all the way around. And because the transistors are what they are, my big thing that I've got is this. Let's zoom you guys back out. We're going to zero this out. We're looking at this in inches, by the way, because I live in America. That is the total thickness of your heatsink bed for your power supply. What I mean by that is that is your entire sink. That metal mass is what allows us to continuously put load or not put load. It gives us the amount of metal that we can absorb. And please note how long this is. Okay. This is supposedly a 10 more amp supply. So they basically cut the thickness of the heat sink over half. And the length of the sink has been cut down by, once again, probably a third, okay? For those of you guys that are in the rest of the world, we'll convert this over to metric units.
That's in millimeters, by the way. Significant metal mass reduction in the cabinet. Fans are still the same. Um, they've even gone and they made themselves smart enough to where there was two screws here, two here, and two in the back that hold the lid on. Um, we've seen this about a year ago where they went to this little stamped ear design. So just know it going forward, this is what we've got. Kind of makes me want to go back and start building with transformers. But this is where we are. This is what we can import into the United States. Makes me sad to think that I might actually miss working with these, but this is where we're at. So you're going to have to calculate to all you guys out there that watch all my videos that want to know how to do your own power supply or the guys that are also builders that are out there. Um, we're just going to have to all embrace the fact that we're now at a 16 volt cap, unless you want to change these filtering caps. I mean, there might be some guy out there that wants to pull these caps out so he can overclock the supply and compensate for um, the higher voltage with extra supplies. But 100 amps right now equals four of these switchers. Where if we're talking, I don't know, a 400 amp supply, you would need 14 modules the old way of doing math. But with these, I mean, you're talking 400 amps divided by 25 is 16 modules. So two or three more. I mean, an eight pill, just think each one of these units supports one transistor. So if you got an eight pill, guess what? Eight transit or eight of these supplies. Each transistor roughly pulls um, 25 amps worth of current. So I'm just saying, if we want to overclock, go to 15 or 14, five, that's the world we live in. It's that simple. So, I mean, it sucks. I know guys out there have literally bought pallets and pallets and pallets of these because that's what they could get. We ran out during a pandemic and, you know, the people in China are saying stuff. We had a good thing going. We, I mean, we had a good thing going with this style of supply. And so when they've got $40,000 sitting out there, hey man, you know, we, we've ordered five pallets worth of power supplies from you and they can't get the parts during COVID or whatnot. Um, that this is what they shipped us to in the United States. So now the market is completely inundated with this style of supply. Um, I hate to break it to people, but I ordered a couple off of Amazon the other day because I wanted to see what was actually going on because I've been hearing flutters about this in the background now for about a month. And this is one of the supplies that showed up. It's the exact same as this. So if you've gotten stuck with a bunch of these switchers, one, don't be too sad about it. It's okay. Just notice in your mind, recognize in your mind that you're not going to be able to put 30, 35 amp worth of load on these. You can only put about 20, 25 and expect it to hold together. And you're limited to 16 volts. Um, how you go about overclocking these has changed a little bit. That's it. I mean, I hope the price point at some point gets to reflect that because you don't get to ask for this money with that kind of supply. But Still, for the price point it's at, and the price point these were at for a decade, we should consider ourselves to be lucky. That's just my opinion. You know, opinions are like a-holes. Everybody's got one, just saying. But this is a lie. This is straight up a lie. There's no way, I mean, there is no way that this can handle what they're advertising. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna put this pile of garbage Pardon me. <clears throat> Pardon me. Pardon me. I'm going to put this supply back in his case. So there's the idea of heat sinking going on. Um, the other thing has changed is the board layout has changed. There's There was two or three screws, like this screw, this screw, and that screw were all ground, case ground on this one. The only case ground on this is right here. And you will find that there's usually only three screws holding the board in. I'm going to remount this and I'm going to get out my battery terminator and we're going to see what it actually does underneath the load. Okay, hey, y'all, prepare to be massively underwhelmed. Um, this is our amp draw. This is our voltage. Now, like I said, 
as possible, we can go watch the voltage very closely. Very possible to overclock to 22 volts, but the filtering caps won't take it. They will explode and send shrapnel flying and little children will go blind in Ethiopia. Okay, so we'll trim out to roughly 14 volts. We have no load on it and we're gonna use a, a screw in compression carbon pile resistor to present load. So now we're gonna be watching a combination of the two meters, this one here and that one here. Here we go. Whoa. So there's 21 amps. 25 amps, look at the voltage drop. 26 amps worth of load. So we're looking at a resting voltage of 14 volts, okay? We've already lost a tenth of a volt, two tenths of a volt, three tenths of a volt, see, it starts falling on his face about 25 amps. So just know that going in, that this is a 25 amp power supply. Now let's have some fun. Let's, let's let this rest for a second. Now let's have a little bit of fun. I mean, that's yeah, just basic hookup and basic, just basic testing. This is hooked up to a 30 amp 110 outlet that I've specifically hardwired. There's nothing else on this, on that line that's specifically hardwired just for me to beat up on 110 volt devices here on the bench. So after that short little bit of testing, this is what the whole thing looks like. I'll try to remember to insert into the video that picture. But let's look at how hot the heat sink is on the side wall of the power supply. So let's have some fun here. Uh oh, power supply die. Did the power supply die? Ah, oh, the crowbar protection kicked in. <laughs> up here in the okay so the crowbar protection did its job it saw too much of a load which was well just a three amp load so we'll trim this back up it's around 14 volts let's see what happens when we actually put a 40 amp load on this that's what I'm curious about Here we go. So 40-ish amps, 40, 41-ish amps, we've lost 10 volts and falling quickly. It's not too bad though. In all fairness, So we're getting 119.7 volts on the input. Okay, now there's no fan guarding this and there's no safety interlock as far as like heat. There's no thermal cutout on this. Transistors, because of the lack of metal mass, 212 degrees. 
those are 150 degrees. Um, boy, the core of that transformer, it's 130 something degrees, 185 degrees, this transformer here. So there's no way, there's just no way that this can be rated for 40 amps and safely do it. So be advised, everybody keep your eyes open. This is once again, because us as America, there is no checks and balance system in today's day and age. There would have been a time where America, we had such, such the power and authority on this planet, we would have just simply sent this back and said, no, it doesn't meet our standard. You know, try again. But unfortunately, that's not the way it works. And then we would have gone after them for the label that they put on here, which was bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. But that's not how it works. So just keep in mind, if you see this S500-12, that this is a 25 amp module, and you have to use 25 amps as your reference. If you have 100 amps worth of load, you need four of these modules. I mean, it sucks, but a two pill now is a two module unit. Just saying, gentlemen, I gotta run. I appreciate every single one of you guys, and believe me, this these will do the job. Remember, they do they do have a fan. They'll do the job, just not at the amp load that everybody's used to. And I wanted to cover why, how we go about overclocking for about higher voltages, and really put it to the test so somebody can see with your peepholes what actually was going on. So on that note, I appreciate every single one of you guys. I'm out of here. Click, click, click.